morning and welcome to the live extraordinary husband q and a video i want to welcome you all here today i really appreciate you tuning in and watching this video i'm joe with the color of marriage and my wife and i we help couples fix and strengthen the broken and weak areas of their marriages using biblical principles concepts and resources so if you need help with any of that uh, you can visit our website at thecolorofmarriage.com. Again, welcome to the live Q&A for The Extraordinary Husband. Today, we're going to be answering the question, what should I do when, or what should you do when your marriage is under attack? Again, what should you do when your marriage is under attack? Uh, because that's going to happen, uh, no doubt about it. And that's what we're going to get in today, get into today, that is. We're going to get into this question. We're going to answer this question. What should you do when your marriage is under attack? All right, so let's go ahead and uh, start off with a word of prayer as we always do. Uh, Father, thank you for your mercy, your grace, your kindness for allowing us to have this time in today's Extraordinary Husband live Q&A. Um, Father, I ask you, Lord, that you be a part of today's uh, question and answer. Uh, I ask, Father, that your Holy Spirit preside over today's video, that you give me the words that you want me to speak, that you help me um, with everything that needs to be said, Father. Remove anything from our hearts and minds that will prevent us from hearing you, Lord, and I thank you for that, and it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, fellas, uh, again, welcome to the live Q&A. And we're going to be answering the question, what should you do when your marriage is under attack? Now, the reason why this is the question for today is because I know sometimes we, we all feel like our marriage is under attack and we don't really necessarily know exactly what to do. And at this particular time, it's even more prevalent in my marriage at this particular time because when you do the work of the Lord, you know, the enemy doesn't like the fact that you're doing God's work. So he's going to put pressure on you. And I definitely feel the pressure of the enemy, but, you know, God is greater than the enemy and I know that God will take care of my wife and I in the marriage and the family but that does not keep the enemy from trying to do the things that he and his cohort will try to do to diminish our marriage to diminish the ministry and so forth and so on so we definitely would love to have you pray for us um, concerning this, but I want to talk to you because, you know, the enemy is definitely going to attack your marriage and, and more than likely could be attacking your marriage right now. And you may not be aware of what's going on. You may be contributing it to something else. Um, but realize that the enemy does not like marriage because it is a creation of God. It perpetuates God's kingdom. It's a value to God. So therefore, the enemy does not like marriage. The enemy wants to do everything that it can do to take out marriage as God presents it in his word. The enemy wants to make marriage everything but what God says it, 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 it is. And he just wants to just wreck it and get rid of it. Uh, and that's what he would do if he had the opportunity to do that without anything preventing him from doing that. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to answer that question and we're going to, in, in no particular order, uh, and maybe it will be in order, maybe it won't, but it doesn't matter. We're going to we're going to take these three points into consideration. 
Uh, and the first point is signs that your marriage is under attack, um, what to do about it, and how to stave off or prevent future attacks on your marriage. So as we talk, as I talk in today's video, these are the things that I'm going to cover. One more time, um, signs that your marriage is under attack, uh, what to do about it, and how to stave off or prevent future attacks because we need to know this information. So to begin with, let's talk about signs that your marriage is under attack. First thing I want you to realize is that the attack always has a spiritual organ. The, the, the attack always has always has a spiritual origin okay i'm gonna say that one more time so they can you can understand what i'm saying you probably do already but i'm just gonna say it one more time for the sake of clarity the attack always has a spiritual origin okay why do i say that why do i say that the attack always has a spiritual origin because Ephesians six twelve tells us, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's what God tells us. Okay, our wrestle is not against man, even though man is being used. When I say man, I mean woman and or male and female, let me say that, it, it, it's not just against them. The enemy and his cohorts, the fallen angels, they use humans to do their biddings. And, and how they do that, they speak to you in, in, in various ways to get you to do what they need you to do. They create gossip. They create various other scenarios to, to cause you to react in certain ways. They know your weaknesses. They know your desires. They know how to tempt you. They know how to get you to do things that will cause craziness or wreak havoc in your marriage and in your life. It, it, there, there's always a spiritual attack connected with difficulties in your marriage. Um, in most of the time, I'm going to say that, but the attack is 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 always a, of a spiritual or origin. Now you're going to have the difficulties of your marriage because of you know who you are and who your wife is because of your personalities and 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 the way that you was raised and so forth and so on. But the enemy will use that against you to cause problems in your marriage and you got to realize that so that therefore you have to recognize the attacks of the enemy you got to see it for what it is so when you have thoughts in your mind about something that's going on with your wife you need to pray about it before you take it to your wife and, and accuse her or say something to her and and I'm learning to do that more and more now um, because I see the implications or I see the effects of when you don't pray about things that you take to your wife, when you feel like she's doing something or has said something, I see there's a difference between when I say it without taking it to God, without taking it to God, and when I do take it to God. Because when I take it to God, God's going to help me to understand it a whole lot better. God's going to help me to relay it to my wife in a way that is more beneficial to the marriage. And he's, God's going to also let me know whether or not I need to actually bring that concern to my wife or not. Now, how my wife receives the concern when I bring it to her, even when I give it to her the way that God wants to me, wants me to do it, it's up to her to now go to God and Ask God, how does he want her to reply? Because the enemy will definitely supply her and also supply me with ammunition that, that 
that will cause a genuine situation to get way out of control because we're not taking it to God to get resolutions. And we can't be doing what we think is right in our own eyes. That's the problem with mankind. We think that we're okay with our God, that we can do these things. We don't need God. And, and, and many times we don't think about including God in the process. We need to always include God in the process because the enemy is always lurking somewhere trying to cause problems in your marriage. And 1 Peter 5, 7 is a good indication of that. And it says, well, let me go to that um, scripture because I don't want to... Um, I don't want to just say it and misquote it or say something that wasn't is not in that. So here it is, 1 Peter 5, 7 in the English Standard Version. It says casting, well, actually 1 Peter 5, 8, forgive me, it's 1 Peter 5, 8. But then let's read that, that five, 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your cares on him or casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. That's one that's one of the things that you need to do when you understand that you're under a spiritual attack. Cast all your cares, your anxieties and your worries. Cast them on God. Give them to God and say, God, I feel like we're under a spiritual attack. We we definitely need your help and and God will give you the strategies that you need to put into place so that you too can overcome the attack that the enemy has on your marriage. And, and it definitely has felt like and seemed like and looked like that the enemy is definitely attacking my wife and I, I marriage, our marriage, uh, over the last couple of weeks. It's been a lot of rough things that has been happening, abnormal activities, things that would not normally happen has been taking place. You know, I, I've been having a constant feeling of being uneasy uh, and there's been more conflict between my wife and I and than, than normal. And so this is going to the signs, you know, th these are the signs that you should look for. And there are other things that you should look for as well. But these are the things that's been happening in our marriage. And I, I need you all to pray for us concerning this. And I pray that you all would pray for yourself and ask other people, because this is one of the things that you need to do when you feel like your marriage is under attack. This is what you should do. You should ask for support and then you should, you know, reach out to other people to ask them to help you. And if you need to go to your pastor or somebody else that can give you guidance, you need to do that as soon as possible. But getting back to the first Peter five, eight, that's the scripture that I really wanted to get to is first Peter five, eight it says, be sober minded. Don't let anything distract you. Don't let anything distract you. Don't let your feelings, your emotions, alcohol, drugs, um, sex, food, don't let that disturb your mind so keep to keep you from paying attention what's going on for from what's going on in your marriage. You got to stay focused. As a husband, we need to stay focused because we're there to guard our marriage. And that's not to say that your wife can't do it, but we're primarily primarily responsible for guarding our marriage and keeping it safe. And, and we don't do that by ourselves. We do that with God or with Jesus, who is our head. But we have to stay sober-minded. We can't be so focused on other things that it keeps us from seeing and hearing and knowing what's going on in our marriage on a regular basis. Okay? So it also says, again, be watchful. So that goes right along with what I'm just saying, what I was just saying. Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Sober means you 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 have you have clear thinking. There's there's nothing that gets that's in the way of you thinking properly. As we know, alcohol will cause you to not think straight. 
drugs will cause you to not think straight. Anxiety will and worry will cause you to not think straight because you focus on those things and they're taking the focus off of what you should be so focused on. So sober means a clear mind, clear head, and, and you're not letting anything cause you to lose focus and you're staying watchful. You are alert and paying attention to the things that's going on. You're not being lazy. As a husband, we can't be lazy. We have to be on our job. It's like when I was in the military, in the Navy, um, you know, you, you had watch duty. You, you had guard duty. Some, some branches call it different. But the main thing is while everybody is doing whatever they're doing, whether they're sleeping, where they're, they're going out doing their daily routine and relaxing, the watch is paying attention to see if anything is happening that's abnormal that could disrupt the routine that could cause problems for the ship, for, the, for everybody that's involved. So you're paying attention, you're watching, you're looking for signs that something's going on. You're looking for activities that should not be happening. And that's what you need to be looking for in your marriage. You need to be paying attention to that. Because if you don't, just like the watchman in the military, if he doesn't pay attention, that can cause a lot of problems up to death. Because if you don't see the unrecognized car driving in with wires hanging out underneath it and you let it in on the base bam there's the bomb that blew up the whole base and killed everybody now people don't have husbands they don't have wives they don't have um, mothers they don't have fathers because you are not paying attention you are not doing your job and that's the same thing in your marriage you got to pay attention and and watch for these things that's happening that could cause problems in your marriage that could damage your marriage that could break your marriage apart you got to pay attention to people coming in or things coming in or things being said or it or whatever it might be could be through your children could be through the television could be through the books you're reading could be through friends and so forth and so on you got to pay attention you got to be alert that's what god is saying you have to do that because because your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. The enemy is out there and, and, and he's not being easy on you. He's not, he's not going to take it easy on you, uh, I should say. And he's always looking for an entrance. He's looking for the weakest point um, to get into your marriage to cause problems and we as husbands have to be watchful we have to be prayerful we have to be connected to God and listening to God so that he can show us what needs to be done so that we can prevent the attacks that the enemy is planning for our marriage uh, are we going to get everything uh, we, we try to do it as best as we possibly can um, especially the big things. Um, if you see something that's just glaring and God is showing to you, look, you need to do something about that. Don't discount what you see. Don't invalidate what you see. Don't play down what you see. You see what you see. Because when you say, ah, oh, that's no big deal. Ah, oh, that's not going to, nothing's going to happen from that. That's when something starts to happen. That's when the enemy starts to creep in and cause damage in your marriage. And you say, then you'll say to yourself, man, I wish I would have did something. I saw that before it was going to happen. So just like I talked about, you see the wires hanging down. You're like, oh, that's no big deal. It's just might maybe a wire loose on the muffler or something like that. Even though... That might be the case. Check it out. Check it out. It's better to be safe 
than sorry. Okay? It's, it's better to be safe than sorry. So check out everything that God places in front of you that could be a potential attack of the enemy. Because if you open your eyes, that's why God's telling you to be sober-minded, to be alert, so that you can be aware of the enemy's attack. You and your wife need to do this, but you need to make sure you are doing this for sure. And like I say, some of the signs that you can see, you, you, you can uh, look out for is abnormal activities um, that 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 is taking place. Like, you know, when we went on vacation over the last you know, couple of weeks, you know, there is, you know, everything was going. Um, I, I guess really the, the the couple of days before that, you, we've been having, you know, issues um, between the two of us and and things that would not normally happen started to happen and then when we got on the road uh our son called us and said he broke down we like 300 miles away from where he was at he he stayed here so that he can you know do work or or also do you know he plays basketball so he he wants to you know get uh, a scholarship for playing basketball so therefore you know he, he stayed so he can practice and and go to specific colleges and so forth and so on. Um, then other things started to happen. Uh, I'm not going to, you know, go through the whole gamut of everything happening. But these things just start happening one after another, one after another, one after another. And it's like, what is going on here? And so, you know, I prayed and my wife prayed. But it was the, the, the enemy's hand was very heavy on us and sometimes at this particular point I still feel like it's very heavy you know and, and like I said you you will have constant feelings of being uneasy and I, I'm not talking about just momentarily but it's just constant it's just not going away so if it's not going away you're like God what is this what's going on help me to see what is going on what am I doing that's causing this what is happening period you, you got to open your eyes and see what may what might you be doing to cause this situation? What is the how are you allowing the enemy to use you to attack your marriage uh, and so forth and so on? And then you have more conflict than normal between you and your wife. And these are some of the signs that you need to look out for um, to understand that the enemy is attacking your marriage. Because, you know, he's always planning attacks. And sometimes he put attack here, a little attack here. But sometimes, like right now, it's like it's an on, alt, on, it's all on assault. You know, it's like the enemy's just boom, 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 throwing things here, there, everywhere. And I'm not saying everything that happens might be from the enemy, but it sure feel like sure feels like it when you have one thing after another, after another, after another take place. And it's not always, it's sometimes it's just normal circumstances. So I don't want you to think that I'm thinking everything that happens bad or, or out of the way is the enemy, but I sure do believe that the enemy many times has his hand in on it especially when one thing happens after another, after another, after another. Maybe two or, two or three of those things were going to happen already. So the enemy like, you know, let me throw this in there. And let me throw this in there. Let me get them confused about this and let this person argue with them about this and let that person accuse them on this and let this person, he, try to, he tries to see whatever avenue that he can get in to cause the most damage in your marriage, don't let the enemy do that because he's out trying to do that. And, and, and as we read in 1 Peter 5, 8, uh, God says that's what the enemy does. He's lurking around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Okay? 
And, God, and, and, and Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 42, he says, Therefore stay awake, for you do not know on, well, this is talking about the day that the Lord is coming, but he does say keep watch. That's the point I want you to hear there is to keep watch. All right? Keep watch. Stay focused. Okay? 2 Corinthians Chapter 2, verse 11, Paul says this, So that we would not be outwitted by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his schemes or his designs. Paul was talking to the Corinthians, telling them about a situation, saying, you know, saying that he's not going to he didn't want Satan to out with them because he was aware of their of Satan's schemes and his or his designs or his evil schemes we have to be aware we have to equip ourselves or we need we need to bring ourselves to the knowledge of what the enemy can and cannot do because the enemy will make you think he can do more than what he can but god says greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world and who is in the world satan is the one who's in the world but you also got to be aware of what satan can do as well but he also he'll, he'll definitely try to scare you to make you think that he can do more than what he really can do he'll threaten you He'll, he will um, make it seem like that he's going to be able to do something when in reality he's not able, he's not able to do that. So the enemy will use all kinds of schemes and tactics and you need to be aware of the schemes and tactics that the enemy will use. And so these are the things that you need to do about it. Pray, get support. And, and, and how do you stave off? The enemy, uh, the enemy's attack, and, and here's another thing of what you, you should do as well. Um, but God tells us to put on the whole armor of God that we might be able to stand against the wiles or the schemes of the enemy. And we can find that in Ephesians chapter 6. And we, we're there already uh, where, where it says, For we wrestle not against uh, flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. God tells us that, you know, the enemy is after us, but God is for us. Because God says, if he be for us, who can be against us? But God says, finally, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in him. Allow him to give you what you need in order to stand against the enemy. He says, put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Uh, and again, that passage, is, that verse, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, uh, against the authorities against the cosmic power over the present darkness, against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Okay? And this is the English uh, standard version that I'm reading. So he says, then, since this is happening, he says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God. Take up the whole armor of God. See, God has given you armor that you can use to stand against the enemy. But also, God says what you should do also when you're attacked by the enemy. He says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. So God also says, you know, that as well. Re, re, you know, resist the enemy. 
um, don't fall for everything that he's telling you. He, he likes, the enemy likes to uh, intimidate. You know, he definitely likes to intimidate, like I said earlier, make you think that he's able to do more than he can do, but stand and put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the enemy. And, and he says, stand, um, with the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. What's the evil day? That's when the enemy is coming about to attack you and having done all to stand. All right. That's what he wants. He, he says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm so that the enemy won't make you quit, won't make you fall away, won't make you do things that he wants you to do because the enemy doesn't want you to stay married. The enemy doesn't want us to do this ministry. The enemy doesn't want you to do your ministry. The enemy wants you to give up. He wants you to quit because when you're doing the work of God, the enemy wants to stop it because he's losing. The enemy wants to stop you from doing what God wants you to do because he's losing. He's losing. He's losing. All right. So he says, all right, stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth. Okay, tell the truth, do the truth, do what, do what's right. You know, it, it this is honesty and integrity, uh, and, and and this is the foundational thing that we as Christians have. The the belt held, holds everything together. If you do not walk in the truth and tell the truth and know the truth. Everything around you falls apart. You got to walk in truth. You have to have the belt of truth on. And I can imagine that Paul is looking at the Roman soldier with all his battle gear on. And he's kind of equating what we need to do to defend ourselves against the enemy with what the uh, Roman soldier has on. And the belt held, hold on, held everything together. And if you look at it. The belt that you hold uh, on holds, holds everything together. Take a police officer. You know, he has his belt or his holster. That held, holds everything. He has all his equipment and all the, the flashlight, the gun, the pepper spray. Sometimes, you know, extra, well, he does. He have extra clips and handcuffs. He has everything. It keeps everything together. It holds everything together. If you're not walking in the truth, then you're walking in a lie. You, you got to do what is right and, and because the enemy is looking for people who are walking crooked and he's going to take advantage of that if you're not doing what's right in your in your marriage then the enemy is going to take advantage of that and do what he can to wreak havoc in your marriage so walk in truth you got to walk in truth and then he says the breast breastplate of righteousness that that's connected to walking in truth but what that has to do is salvation. That means a clean heart. Jesus it, it died for you so that you can get the Holy Spirit to quicken your spirit, to make it alive to God. Because right now, if you're not born again, you can't hear from God. You can't connect with God unless someone who is of God is speaking to you. And, and that's how God speaks to you. But once God puts his Holy Spirit in you, he, he quickens your spirit. Now you are alive to God, no longer dead. And now you can hear from God. But if you want that spirit of yours to grow, you need to keep putting the word of God in. And, and so Christ considered you to be now righteous, righteous before God. But now you need to start living righteous and living out how God wants you to live. Because if you don't, the enemy takes advantage of that. OK, he takes advantage of that because when you don't live right, guess what? He now can accuse you of doing things wrong. Like when you tell those lies and and you do something that you know you're not supposed to do or you cheat somebody when you know you're not supposed to cheat. He's he's going to make that big, especially if you're in ministry doing something that's causing him not to win the battle. You got to know that. Okay. 
And, and, and then he says, as for shoes, having put uh, on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. Um, you know, put on shoes. Shoes keep, helps you to not, to, to, to stand firm, helps you to move across all terrain without slipping or without falling so that you can take the gospel of peace to those who need it because the enemy doesn't want you to do that. And that's part of our, our, our defense is bringing others into the um, kingdom of God that we can have more for us in the kingdom of God than, than, uh, than that's against us. That's what we need to be doing, taking the gospel of peace, peace in, to bring peace about our world, to bring peace like God wants us to have. Uh, we, need to, we need to do that. And, and, and you need to be ready to share the gospel because if you don't have the belt of truth or the breastplate of righteousness, it's kind of hard to share the, 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 the peace of the gospel with someone, um, then also you need to have the shield of faith, you know, which quenched the, the darts of the enemy, knowing that God's going to take care of you. And then the helmet of salvation, it symbolizes your assurance that you are saved and because the enemy wants to trick you into thinking you that you're not saved. He wants to get into your head. And then the sword of the spirit, that's what allows you to say, Satan, this is not what God says. This is what God says. This is how I'm supposed to live. This is, I'm not supposed to do, do this and, and, and that. So put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the schemes of the enemy when he's attacking your marriage. So that's what I have to say about what should you do when your marriage is under attack. I hope you take what I'm saying to you seriously and that you will put it into practice the next time that you recognize the enemy attacking your marriage. Pray for me and my wife as I pray for you and your wife. And I thank you for being a part of this. Uh, and if you want to be a better husband, there's um, schedule a 15-minute call with me. Uh, I'll be more than happy to talk about how we can help you become a better husband. We also have the Extraordinary Husband Masterclass. You can become a part of that. You can check out how to become a part of that on our website, thecolorofmarriage.com. Support our ministry. Support the mission. I'm asking you to do that if you feel like you get value from this. Support the mission so that we can continue doing what we're doing. You know, Everything is not free. You already know that. Everything takes money, even though we may be making money. But the more we have, the more we could do. And if you think this is a valuable mission, please support the mission through your donations. This is a 5013C ministry, so you it will be tax deductible. You can do it through PayPal. You can through it, do it through Zelle. 678-218-9955. Uh, you can do it through PayPal uh, or you can do it through Cash App as well. Um, but I thank you for whatever support you give, but I definitely need your support in prayer and then also your support in showing up as well. This, 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 is, this is an important ministry and if you feel like it's an important ministry, uh, then help keep this ministry moving forward. So again, what should you do when you when your marriage is under attack? Going back over it, you 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 need to pray. You need to pay attention to what's going on. You need to recognize when your marriage is under attack. Look out for the abnormal activities, the constant feelings of being uneasy, um and and the more conflicts in challenges between you and your wife. And Jarrell, thank you for being here uh, watching. And you should pray. You should get support. You should do whatever you need to do to stave off or prevent attacks. And that's why that's what you need to do. You need to put on the whole armor of God. All right. So let's go ahead and pray out, y'all. Thank you, Lord, for letting me allow, allowing me to have this uh, video today, to, to do this video today. Help this video to go out to everyone who needs it and who may not think they need it. Help them to put the 
information that they learned from this video into action. I pray that you will uh, keep your heads of protection over my, our marriage and the marriages that's represented by those who watch this video. Uh, protect us from the enemies of our souls. Um, thank you for what you have done and what you are going to do. Uh, help us to grow closer to you, Father. Help us to feed our spirit man so that we can become mature. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thanks for watching this video. Thanks for being a part of the video. Do what's in this video so that you can survive the attack of the enemy on your marriage. And the biggest part of this is you doing the right thing, you doing what God asks you to do. All right, take care. Have a good rest of the day. Be safe and do what God tells you. All right, until next time. Bye-bye.